Who wants to talk about compliance? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm glad that people are excited. Um, so we, we have this uh, little thing that's been going on for a couple of months, I would say. Um, uh, not super actively yet. It's basically been wrapping up. That's called the, the Decentralized Data Compliance Working Group. It's one of those working groups that we've been talking about that are sprouting up all over the place and that no one knows where to find or, 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 or what to do with them. Um, it's been chaired by um, Juan Caballero. And the, the purpose is basically, you know, anyone who's interested in, in, in this set of issues, which I'm, I'm going to describe in, in great detail afterwards, um, is absolutely welcome to join. It's not, uh, it's, it's been, you know, started by a bunch of IPFS Filecoin people, but it's, it's much, um, it's open to a much broader um, ecosystem. And so what exactly does this uh, working group work on? Um, well, it, it, it's primarily focused on, on finding, um, you know, uh, solutions to the problems that, um, that, that emerge once you start to introduce decentralization into typical, um, uh, you know, compliance problems. So if you're a, a regular Web2 or even not Web um, company, you will have issues with privacy compliance and you might have issues with, I mean, you, you would have to be probably a web one to have issues with, uh, um, with GDPR, uh, with, um, um, with, with, with takedown and the such, but essentially these are, these are classic issues, uh, but that are made more, let's say more interesting by their, uh, intersection with decentralized technologies. And so for instance, if someone starts storing personal data on IPFS, um, and, you know, people replicate that content, who is the data controller, what kind of uh, encryption and controls might you need to have about, uh, around it, uh, what kind of GDPR obligations or CPRA obligations, and there's a shit ton of, like, privacy regimes out there um, that we might need to think about. Um, you know, if you run a, a public gateway, I think this is a problem that Boris is quite familiar with. Uh, how do you handle your copyright takedown notices when it's not even your content to start with? Or how can you run a gateway such that you won't have that problem? Um, and yeah, I decided to just like arbitrarily name the public uh, <laughs> network slash DHT because we've been talking about it all day, so I figured it needed a name there. Um, you know. <laughs> I don't even have an acronym for it, but you know, um, and you know, the, 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 this this whole set of issues like like CSAM and, and terrorist content, and and uh, one thing that came up in the meeting yesterday is that have you thought about libel, which is a a horrendously complicated area um, that I don't want to handle, but that we probably need to be thinking about. And so, uh, you know, th this, all this all ties to the technical mechanisms that we can use to support some of this. And so it also has to, to impact how we, how we govern uh, the bad bit system in general. There was a meeting of this working group earlier this week uh, here. A um, bunch of us got together um, in the short term. We're going to work on Primarily developing an overview of the issues because what we've been doing over the past few weeks have been you know, has been mostly like, have you thought also of that other problem? And oh, I spoke to my DPO and they think that that could blow up in our face. And so we we have a sorry a DPO sorry a data privacy officer. Um, uh, sorry for the jargon. Uh, <laughs> what you don't know what a DPO is and you're in a compliance session? This is a compliance track, right? Um, so yeah, no, we, we, we basically have a big pile of issues on the floor uh, and we, we want to sort them into buckets so that, such that we can put our arms around it and start producing um, uh, solutions or at least recommendations to it. And so part of that is, is, is figuring out what the problem space is. Part of that is also understanding how to explain our space to regulators or people, you know, lawyers, um, experts in, in that domain uh, who, 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 who want to understand and want to help and are often like glad that we're thinking about it in the first place. Uh, but as you know, it's not always ex that easy to, to, to explain uh, what we do. And I'm going to try to reach out to a, a, a number of people who have faced these, these issues, but who are like large companies with like, you know, an army of small army of lawyers um, to see if they, if they're willing to, 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 to also support. And there's a bunch of people who are interested that the, the group has been steadily growing. Every time someone hears about it, they go like, oh yeah, we should probably be thinking about that as well. Um, 
And so, you know, the, the next steps that, that we're going to take is like, so, you know, as, as, as Cade um, recommended that we should be doing anti-user research. And so basically figuring out ways in which we can make it painful to misuse things. Um, uh, as I said, we're going to build this overview of the problem space so that we can like chunk it down into, into smaller, smaller issues to, 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 to fix and also advocate for this, right? There's a number of actors who are really YOLO about how to approach the, 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 these problems. But I really think that a lot of, of the companies in PLN and in the, in the broader space um, want to address this or at, le at least would, like, would be willing to contribute a bit of time to helping um, uh, address this. And beyond that, once we figured out what we want to do, we, you know, it'll depend on, 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 on where we land, but I think we will probably try to build things like shared legal notices that people can reuse. So that way you're, you're an operator, you know, you need to have this special, special text in your terms of service. You, need, you know, you need to have this specific like privacy process, um, you know, things, things that can be replicated easily, trying to build out um, best practices. One option on the table, um, this, this is Europe only, but these things tend to have like international influence as well, is that there's a process under the GDPR where an industry can come together and say for these specific problems, that is how we, um, we address them and how we enforce um, the solutions. And so that, 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 could, that, could, that, that could be one, one outcome. And that's basically it. Um, you know, if you wanna come, if you wanna come play, uh, the links are here. It's a friendly bunch, and we talk about compliance. It's a lot of fun. Are there? Are there any questions? Yep. Uh, wait, 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 wait for the mic, please. There's a lot of infrastructure already out there that can be leveraged today. A lot of NGOs doing a lot of good work that yep. you can work with. Um, I happen to be a technical regulator. So I'm offering to help your working group and help you move into compliance wherever you want. So I'll come out right to you and we can move forward. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. So for the, for the record, you're, you're with Ofcom, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that would be absolutely wonderful. Yeah, we actually talked about you a couple of times at the meeting and we're really excited that you are participating. So we'd love to work with you. Um, can you post these slides in the share channel? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, I think this is great. Uh, I think there's going to be, I think we were able to coast by with a lot of work on this uh, while protocols were smaller and younger and so on. But with a lot of the data coming into um, things like Falcon and so on and the distribution of uh, network participants around the world in jurisdictions that disagree a lot about what content should be distributed, yep. uh, it's going to become more and more and more uh, important. Um, and so I think finding, finding like solutions that work earlier on, even if, we, if they're not like the good long-term thing to do, uh, and then just incrementally improving them, I think will be really valuable. Um, and one other idea um, that has been looking around the community for a long time is to um, just separate into like different sets of bad bits yeah. that different communities can subscribe to. So that you know, the people that care about DMCA can follow the DMCA list. Um, the people that care about right to be forgotten can do that, you know, and so on. So that you can create like different, different clusters of self-governance around what a deny list and whatnot should uh, contain, um, and that might extend all the way into how you implement it. Both like the groups, how, like the oversight over those lists, the technologies that you use to distribute those lists, and whatnot. Yep. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I've, I've, I've uh, had to intersect uh, a certain amount with uh, safety teams from large platforms over the past few years. And I mean, I respect what they're trying to do. They're really trying to keep people safe, but I really cringe at the way in which they do it. It's, it's, I mean, their assumption is you should have no privacy because otherwise we can't protect you. Um, and so that's, that's what I listed as we want to avoid like becoming a rent -a cop model. Um, and so, yeah, absolutely. We need, we, we can't have just one bad bits list, but we should have expectations of each bad bits list that it, we can always know if it's being kept up to date, for instance, um, uh, what went into it, what, how the sausage was made so that people can then be informed in picking which ones they want. And we don't want operators going like, oh, I'll take all the bad bits lists because uh, that way I'm safe. Um, 
and, and appeals. So often the, the most common thing that happens, or not the most common, but one of the big common things that happens is things get dragged into that list that should have never been there in the first place. Yep. And you need a good process for how do you get things out of that list. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, it's going to be fun. Are there any other questions? Well, thank you very much. Let's move on to the next session then.